So I've had this 2021 Bronco for a minute now. This is a seven speed manual, two door Bronco base. Now what's absolutely crazy is one, you still can't get these things. And like I said, I've had this forever, but aftermarket parts are very hard to come by. There's a couple small lifts, couple parts here and there, tie rod stuff. We're gonna get all that stuff done to this. Don't you worry. But the depth of products available is very slim. However, we are finally able to get our hands on the product I wanted since I got this Bronco. When these things came out, everyone was kind of up in the air about these. These black fender flares here. Now they're not too difficult to actually take off. You know, you flip them, flip, 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 and they come off. Not anything crazy. Um, it's actually a cool design of how these things go in. They clip in they, and, and, and they stay. And it's pretty sweet. But the look of them on the Bronco is hit or miss to some. And last year at SEMA, Advanced Fiberglass Concepts came out with something amazing. Replacement body panels to completely, and I mean completely, delete not only this flare, but also this channel. A couple companies like Rough Country and a few others have plates that'll go in here and fill this gap, but obviously it looks like you filled this gap. But Advanced Fiberglass Concepts made a whole body kit, and now not only they're making one, they're making multiple. They made um, scoop hoods, they're making slant back hard tops. They've got a slew of products available now and also coming soon. One of them is going to be a pretty cool hard top for this. It'll actually come back. I think it'll slant. It's, it, it's very, very cool. And they'll also make it so it's like one piece. So there's no, you know, T-tops kind of like the old Bronco. It'll be a one piece hard top and uh, go on there. So that's pretty sweet. It's finally time to make this thing more aggressive. The coolest part about all of this is we have a new hood, a scoop hood. It's going to make this thing look super aggressive. It's going to completely change the look of this Bronco. I mean, that's kind of sweet, but kind of cheap. It like gets held in by the lug nut right there. Yeah. Huh. So these are the wheels that are gonna go on this Bronco. Now, I'm gonna do a test real quick. Before the body kit and after the body kit. We're gonna show how much these poke out. This obviously, this isn't a standard kind of Bronco we're building here. We're building something fun, cool, fancy. Um, and then these are the wheels that are going on. As you can see, they've collected a lot of dust because literally nothing is available to put on this thing except these. Oh. Because these things are so pretty, I'm not gonna even, my hands are black and sweaty and I'm wet, so I don't wanna get fingerprints all over this and have to deal with cleaning these, which sounds ridiculous because they're going on a vehicle, but um, just don't wanna deal with that right now, so extra precautions. Okay, so first thing I noticed, this is completely out of like 
context of this video. But the way these lug nut studs are and this wheel is mounted, you almost need the, the lug nuts with a shoulder that go into, into the wheel because the mounting surface is so deep that even the lug nuts I have on there right now, they, um, they don't really seat in there pretty deep. So something with like the, the shoulder on the end that'll actually go beyond um, you know, the lug hole and kind of center that and, and create a better connection is definitely necessary on these vehicles. Um, Cause there is a lot of room around the stud in here. And um, you, want, you want the wheel on there straight. That's pretty wide. That's very wide. But it's gonna look so good, especially with the tires on it. This thing's gonna be mint. Woo! Oh wow. We're gonna see real quick what it looks like with this flare off. Um, and then I guess we'll get, the, we'll get the body kit on. I think it snaps in behind the lugs and you don't have to do this, but. So we got the whole fiberglass body kit kind of laid out here. We got the hood, fenders, quarters, all that. We ran into a couple things. I just reached out to the company, asked them to see if this was supposed to happen or not. Like I said, we just did that kit car. Whole body was fiberglass, doors, everything. But they sent it to you knowing that stuff needs to be modified for it to work. Some things here need to be modified. Like you got to drill the holes, cut out the gas door, things like that. That's okay. But even with the kit car, there had to be a lot of sanding, a lot of modification, a lot of fixing to get it right. On their website, it says very minimal because like I said, these are a new kit. And I, as far as I was concerned or knew, um, these are supposed to come out of the box, be able to go on, everything's good, like zero body work, anything required. But we ran into some instances where body work is required and I don't know if that's a, um, you know, that's something that can be fixed prior to me even touching these. So I reached out to the company, see what they got to say. So we're not going to push and get these things all put on. Like I said, that's going to be fixed and getting, you know, this flat is going to take a lot of work and that's going to, I just want it to be perfect, really. Same thing up here by the gas door. Um, it's kind of, you know, obviously there's a crack right there. Same thing over here. But very well, that could have been how they were put in the box. Down here inside, like there's a chip. Can all this be fixed with fiberglass and fiberglass body fill filler? Of course. But if I don't have to do that and they're like, yo, that's not right, send them back, do something like that, we'll fix it for you, I'm just gonna wait. I'm just gonna wait. Um, if not, and if that was like, you know, it's fiberglass, some stuff like this will happen and it's known to happen, like I, I know, um, and we gotta fix it, then we will. But I'm gonna wait before we get ahead of ourselves and get all this on the Bronco. Because as we're installing this, I'm also going to shape and get all the body lines to line up perfectly. And when that's done, this thing's like ready for paint. So, uh, and the amount of time we're going to do that. And I don't even have a color picked out or wrap picked out or anything. So it's best to just wait and see what they have to say before we get all in over our head, start, you know, doing a bunch of body work on these panels and um, really could have just got whole replacements to start. So while we're waiting on an answer on those parts, we've got something else cool for this Bronco that nobody's ever done and in the forums people just talk about all I hear and all the comments all I see is it's a lot of work it's too much money yada 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 blah 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 it's not gonna work but nobody's actually ever I, or have I seen actually try what we're about to do because you cannot obtain what I'm about to show you a long time ago I came across something that is very rare like OEM parts right now but something that's super rare that kind of belongs in this Bronco and it is an OEM 
12 inch screen. Yes, obviously you guys know with Rams, Jeeps, all the Uconnects, you can upgrade those screens with slight modification between blowers or whatever, and you can get it done. So we're gonna see right now if one, if I plug this in to the dash, which does take a lot to remove, but if I plug this in, will this radio work? Will I get the, the security code? Will I have to call the dealership? And if they could even help me, because again, I'm doing something I feel like no one's ever done, and get the radio pin and do that. Let's see, let's see how this works. This is the interesting part about these. This, pretty much the radio is like, the first thing that goes in and everything else gets built around it. Um, to get into here, we gotta take this off, this, everything. Everything needs to go. So this is gonna be a lot of work for something that that's probably why people in the forums, and plus that was years ago before this even kinda was a thing and they're out and about. And you can get parts like that. So we're about to find out here. Step one, this needs to come out. Boom. Oh. Boom, pop that out, come back here, you'll be able to disconnect this plug. And you gotta take out your speaker grills up here for your tweeters, which is also probably good. We may leave this apart because Wallace is in pieces. I think I'm gonna um, upgrade all the audio in this thing. Because I'm gonna be honest with you, the audio in this stock Bronco sucks. Like, it's bad. I mean, it's not bad, it's tolerable, but it does not sound as good as like my stock Ram does which is bizarre. Um, and on top of that, there's only a speaker here, down here, and there's two in the rear roll bar on the two doors. If you have an upgraded package, it does come with a sub and maybe two other speakers, but it's nothing like crazy. But as for this, there's three speakers here, here, and here, so it should be an easy, um, easy upgrade. And then we'll throw two subs in the back. Okay, so underneath the dash here, there's three of these. They're plug holders. They come up here. You'll see them when you look underneath your Bronco dash. They come down and out right here. All right, seven millimeter. They're up in here. And then there's one up here by each speaker. Don't forget that. This one and the other side. So those four bolts on the side, guys, remove them on both sides. So eight bolts total, that handle will pop off, and it'll give you access to screws holding this top in, and then we can pop it out. After you get those handles out, there's two torques here, T15, and then down inside of this hole here, there's another T15, and that should be it for the top piece. All right, yank out like that. Those side trim pieces may kind of fall out, but that's fine. So take your top dash piece. That's out, that's good to go. All the clips stayed, that's pretty dope. Now we have the first layer of the onion peeled back. We gotta go here and here as well, but we gotta take this bottom trim piece off too. Same way, there's a couple screws here. Inside the glove box, we're gonna be able to get the airbag unbolted. There's also another Torx here holding the dash in, so we'll get that out now. We'll do the same thing under here. We're gonna get these sevens out. If you look straight up, you can see them. They're not hiding at all. Um, they're just out of sight when the vehicle is just, I guess, put together. Okay, so also to get this piece off, there's something behind this dash piece, but to get this dash piece off inside the glove box here, there's a screw up here. It's another seven mil. Where are you going? Hmm? And on the other side here, you're gonna pop this dash panel down right here underneath the wheel. The whole thing folds down. You haven't seen that install of the uh, pedal monster and i dash on this. We've done this piece before, but there's another seven mil screw here holding this part of the dash on. 
There we go, this will pop out. And then after you get this uh, volume control thing kind of popped out, there's a single, and by single I mean literally single seven millimeter bolt behind here, which is to me sounds ugh, kind of like a waste of time on Ford's end, but. Here's this, if you want to unplug that, you can get it out of the way. It's your uh, push start here. Okay, so now we're on the final piece of this dashboard. It's this whole middle section here, um, here to here. Two bolts here, there's one on the side. One here, the glove box. There's two, um, there's two airbag bolts up top, two at the bottom that'll allow the thing to be pulled out from the dash because it's secured to the uh, frame behind it and then the airbag's in the dashboard, so it holds it pretty still back there, but we'll get those out, these out, and then we'll finally, finally have access to the radio. Okay, so now there's two airbag bolts on top and the bottom. Once you got that plug disconnected, up top here, get these two bolts, eight millimeters, you're gonna need an extension. It goes through the dash. To get the airbag bolts out, there's two seven mils right here. Okay, so after those bolts are out, this dash piece should pop. Okay, so now we're at the final piece to the puzzle and it's this radio. Four seven mils, pop them out. All right, so after those four screws are out, your radio will come out, and that is bizarre. The way this looks right now is some wild, wild reason. This entire screen, everything happens through uh, those four pins. But we've got that plug, but we also have another plug. I'm thinking that this plug is either for like a GPS or navigation or something, but let's see what happens when we plug this in. It won't. It truly won't plug in. Okay, so obviously on this, there's two plugs. This one's got one. This plug right here, obviously it's pink, and then this one's tan. These, This plug here does not plug into here. It doesn't. Um, just doesn't fit and um, we did go the extra length of trimming the one little tab off so it will slide in and when you do um, the screen does not power up that is a fact it does not turn on where my brain goes is where what's the difference why does this screen have two why does this screen have one and obviously following these wires back they come back here to this module here which I don't know exactly what it is, but my question is, is if we ordered the module or whatever this is, I have a feeling that that's how they got these screens to be so thin is all of what needs to work in here works in here. And they just give you a, you know, pretty much a display here. Um, Uconnects are quite thick. They're thicker than this. And I think a lot of it's built into it, including the plugs. But like I said, you get these small, small plugs and like the big radio plug with all the speakers and everything else coming out of it looks to be right here. So my question is, is if I get this harness and plug it into the correct module that goes behind this screen, will it also have the cables that come out and plug into here? So good thing we found out um, this today. Um, I will say that this looks super sharp but that's the other thing i'm gonna have to go with here is looking at this i mean it fits right between these vents i'm gonna figure out if there's a way to actually convert this over get the different radio module or whatever it is and put this in but while we're in here as well and we have this dash apart i think it's time to do the audio in this thing because um we've come this far i'm not going to put it back together to take it back apart again but um yeah so at least we got this thing torn apart ready for the audio and a um, little bit of, you know, R&D here on can you put a 12 inch screen in a base model Bronco by just buying the screen like a Ram or a Jeep, the answer is no, it's a big no. Um, but I'm gonna dig in a little deeper, see what it would take to convert this thing. Um, and get this thing to a 12 inch screen because that'd be pretty nasty. All right guys, so we finally got this Bronco build underway. Like I said, I want to figure out that screen. 
Um, I don't know if I'm gonna go the lengths to order the module and do all that. It's pretty, it'd be pretty cool, but then you gotta find a dashboard and do some other stuff. And frankly, I just don't. <laughs> right now with how this is going and how parts are available and stuff, it may not be in my best interest to go through that and do that on this build. However, however, we can still, from this point, tap in, get everything we need, run, um, you know, run the wires for the speakers, any like RCAs, line output converters we need, we'll get that stuff hooked up, we'll get, you know, everything swapped out, some subs installed, and I think this thing, um, I think this thing's gonna turn out pretty, pretty slick. And we're just gonna wait on an update for this if this is a, like, warrantyable thing, and if not, I'll get busy on the bodywork, no problem. Uh, whatsoever like I, I just assume that with fiberglass. It's a very um, Interesting material, but like I said if it I'm just checking before I do extra work that I don't need to so anyways guys If you enjoyed this video shoot a thumbs up if you haven't been here before Please get down there click subscribe drop me a comment if you haven't already take care And I will see you guys in the next one